service, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Let's bring our hearts before God. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King, we are so thankful to call you Father, and you delight in us as your children. Oh, thank you, Lord. And as our King, you lead us in this year and forever in victory because what was done for us in the Messiah. And so we're thankful for his finished work. We're thankful for his atonement. We're thankful for the full acceptance we have in the beloved. We're thankful for the blessings we have to be called not only B'nai Elohim, children of God, uh, but to be called saints, holy ones. Lord, our hearts are thrilled at what you've done for us because you love us. Now we ask your blessing upon David and Jerry, strengthen them, encourage their hearts as they lead us in our Torah service, and may your blessing be upon us, that the Holy Spirit would fill us, that we worship you in spirit and in truth, that to the, through the Torah service we'd have true Chavanah, uh, intentionality of heart, that the name which is above every name would be blessed, honored, and exalted, and so we pray for the peace of Jerusalem in his name, for he is the Prince of Peace. And therefore we pray for peace for Israel that only comes in the Messiah. But we do pray your protection over our people regarding your promises. But even more so, Lord, we pray for their salvation. For all this we ask, B'Shem Yeshua, HaMashiach HaDeneinu, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord. Amen. Here's David. Most of you know our service this morning is primarily a prayer service and the word. And would you please stand and join me in the Matovu? Matovu, O Halecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Israel. Vaani berov chasdecha, avovetecha, eshtachavel el heichal, kadshecha beiratecha. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob! Your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. In awe, I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. Please join me in the Shema. Baruchu et Adonai hamevorach. Baruch Adonai hamvorach leolam va'ed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem, Kevod Malichuto, Le'olam va'ed ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha bechol levavcha uvchol nafshecha uvchol me'odecha ve'hayu harvarim ha'ele asher Anochi mitzavecha, hayom alvavecha, vishinantam levanecha, vidibarta pam, vishivtecha bavetecha, uvlechtecha vaderech, uvshachbecha uvkumecha, uksartam leot al yadecha. Vehayu le totafot bene necha, uchtavtam al mizuzo betecha, 
Uvisharecha. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Um, just because we're standing doesn't mean you have to. So just want to get that out there. If you feel like sitting down, it's perfectly fine. Okay? Yit gadal ve'yit kadash shemei Beolma divra chirute, ve yam lich malchute, becha ye hon uv yo me hon, uv ha ye de hol be Israel. Bagala, bagala, uv is man kariv. Veimru Amen. Yehesh me rabo me vorach. Leola mulol me almaya. Yit barach. Yit barach. Ve yishtabach. Viet ba aviet roman viet nase. Vita dar, vita le, vita lal, shmeit kucha, brichu, leela, min kol birchata, veshirata, tush bechata, venechemata, da miran beolma. Ve'imru amen. O se shalom bimromav. Hu ya se shalom aleinu. Ve'al ko Israel. Ve'imru imru amen. May his great name grow exalted and sanctified in the world that he created as he will, in your lifetimes and in your days, and in the lifetimes of all the house of Israel, swiftly and soon, and we say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, mighty, upraised, and lauded, be the name of the Holy One, blessed is he. Beyond any blessing and song, praise and consolation that are uttered in the world. And we say, Amen. He who makes peace in his heights, may he make peace upon us and upon all Israel. And we say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. From Leviticus 23. Read with me, please. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. From Psalms 81, Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, strike the timbrel the sweet-sounding lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day, for it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. Would you please stand for and pray with me the Amidah? Adonai svatai tiftach ufiagiti ilatecha. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai, 
Eloheinu, velohe avoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor Vehanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Chasdei Avot, who may be go live nevenehem, the man shemo beahava, Zachrenu lechaim, Melech hafez bachaim, Vichot venu besefer hachaim. Lemancha Elohim, Lemancha Elohim, Elohim Chayim. Melech Oser, Umoshia Umagain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham. Ata gibor le olam aronai, Michaye metim, Ata rav le hoshia, Michal kel chayim bechesed, Michaye metim berachamim rabim, So mech noflim verofe cholim, Umati rasurim, umekaye memunato, liche neafar, micha mochaba agevurot, umido melach, melech me midu mechaye. Umat miach Yeshua, vene emanata le hachayot metim, baruch ata Adonai, michayei ha metim. Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his namesake with love. Remember us for life, king of desire of life, and write us into the book of life for your sake, O living God. O king, helper, savior, and shield, Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. You are mighty forever, O Lord. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with kindness. Resurrect the dead with abundant mercy. Support the fallen. Heal the sick. Release the confined. And maintain faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you? O King who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Nikadesh et shimcha ba'olam, keshem shimakdishim, o to bishmei marom, kakatu valyad neviecha, Vikara ze el ze veyamar. Kadosh, 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 Adonai tzvaot, Melochol haaretz kevodo. Leumatam baruch yomeru, Baruch kevod Adonai, Mim komo, mim kom cham al kenu tofia, vetim lo chalenu, ki mechakim anach nulach. 
Matai timloch betzion, bekad rov beyamenu, leolam va ed tishkon. Tit gadal ve tit kadash, betoch Yerushalayim icha, ledor vador, ledor vador, Ule netzach netzachim netzachim ve'einenu tireina tireina malchutecha kadavar ha'amur b'shire uzecha ha'yedei David Mashiach tzidkecha. Yim lo charonai le olam, elohai ich zion, le dor va dor, hallelujah. Together. We will sanctify your name in this world, even as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your prophet. And they call to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Those facing them say, Blessed, blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. From your heavenly abode you will appear, O our King, and reign over us, for we wait for you. When will you reign in Zion? Soon, even in our days, may you dwell there forever and ever. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city from generation to generation and for all eternity. May our eyes see your kingdom as it is expressed in the songs of your might by the hand of David, your righteous anointed. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation, hallelujah. Sim, sim, sim shalom, sim shalom tova uvracha. Sim, sim, sim shalom, tova tova uvracha. Sim, sim, sim shalom, sim shalom tova uvracha. Sim, sim. Sim shalom, tova tova uvracha. Chein vachesed veracha mimaleinu veal ko Yisrael amecha. Barcheinu avinu kulanu keechad beor panecha. Sim, sim. Sim shalom, sim shalom tova uvracha. Sim, sim, sim shalom, tova tova uvracha. Sim, sim, sim shalom, sim shalom tova uvracha. Sim, sim, sim shalom. Tova, tova, uvracha. Establish peace, goodness, blessing, grace, kindness, and compassion upon us and upon all of your people, Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us as one, with the light of your countenance. Please join me for Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King. Avinu makenu, chanenu va'anenu. Avinu makenu, chanenu va'anenu, ki e'banu ma'asim. Asei manu. Zdaka vachesed, asei imanu, 
דקה בחסד והושיענו. אבינו מלכנו, חננו וענינו. אבינו מלכנו, חננו וענינו. כי אין בנו מעשים, עשה עמנו צדקה בחסד, עשה עמנו צדקה בחסד, והושיענו, עשה עמנו צדקה בחסד, עשה עמנו צדקה בחסד, והושיענו. Our Father, our King, be merciful and answer us, though we plead no merit, Deal with us according to your loving kindness and answer us. You may be seated. This time I'm going to call Stephen up to the Bema, or about the Kia, and Jerry Lefkowitz to assist. Before he sounds the shofar, Say the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddushanu b'mashiach Yeshua, Vetzivanu lishmoa kol shofar. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in Messiah Yeshua, and has instructed us to sound the shofar. Would you please stand? Stephen will sound first Tekia, Shvarim, Terua, and Tekia. He will sound to Kia, Shvarim, and to Kia. sound to kia to rua to kia twice then to kia to rua and to kia gedola read along responsively in the bold print. The earth is the Lord and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean heart and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood 
and has not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face, even Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, who no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Stephen will sound Tekia, Shavarim, Tirua, and Tekia. Please be seated. Who is a God like you, who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You will give truth to Jacob and unchanging love to Abraham, which you did swear to our forefathers from the days of old. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Messiah Yeshua. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Messiah Yeshua is he who died, yes, yes. rather he who is raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, of God which is in Messiah Yeshua, our Lord. Please stand. Stephen will sound to Kiyosh of Arim and to Kiyosh. He manifested himself with the sound of the shofar, the Lord amidst the sound of the shofar, with trumpets and the sound of the shofar, shout before the Lord your king. Sound of the shofar at the new moon, at the full moon for our feast day, for it is a statute unto Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. When the shofar is sounded, listen all you inhabitants of the world. And he will send forth his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last shofar. For the shofar will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall all be changed. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the shofar of God, and, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Please stand. Stephen sounds to Kia, to Rua, and finally to Kia Gadola. Amen. You may be 
seated. Please join me. In Kamocha va Elohim Adonai, ve in Kemasecha, Malchutcha Malchut ko Olamim, Umem Shaltecha, Bechodor Vador. Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Yimloch, Le'olam va'ed, Adonai os le'amo yitain, Adonai yivarech et amo v'ashalom. There is none like you among the gods, my Lord, and there is nothing like your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion is throughout every generation. Hashem reigns. Hashem has reigned. Hashem will reign for all eternity. Hashem will give might to his people. Hashem will bless his people with peace. Av harachamim Et Zion, Tifne Chomot Yerushalayim, Tifne Chomot Yerushalayim, Ki Vecha. Levad batachnu, melech el ram venisa, adon olamin. Father of compassion, do good to Zion according to your will. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for we trust in you alone, O King, God, exalted and uplifted. Master of Worlds. Please stand as we open the Aron Kodesh. Please join me. Vayehi bin soa haaron vayomer Moshe Kuma Adonai, Vea Futsu Oivecha, Vea Nusu Mesanecha, Mipanecha, Ki Mitzion, Tetze Torah, Ki Mitzion, Tetze Torah. Udevar Adonai, Mirushalayim, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Leamo Israel, Big Dushato. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let those who hate you flee from you. For from Zion the Torah will come forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who gave the Torah to his people Israel in holiness. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, Ere Chapayim, Virav Chesed Vemet, Noce Chesed La Alafim, Noce Avon Vafesha, Vechata Venake. Adonai, Adonai, 
El rachum vechanun, erech apayim, virav chesed veemet, no se chesed la alafim, no se avon va fesha, vechata venake. Adonai, Adonai, er rachum vechanun, er echapayim, verav chesed veemet, no se chesed la alafim, no se avon va fesha, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Amen. Velish me kadisha kadisha yakira ana emar tush bechan yehe rava kadamach detif tachliba ibe oraita vetash limisha lindaliba i Veliba de Chola Mach Israel, Letavul Chayin Velishlam. Amen. In Him do I trust, and to His glorious and holy name do I declare praises. May it be your will that you open my heart to your Torah and that you fulfill the desires of my heart and the heart of your entire people Israel for good, for life, and for peace. Amen. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai. Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adoneinu, Kadosh Shemo. Echad Eloheinu, Un Rome ma shemo yachdav. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. One is our God, great is our Lord. Holy is his name. One is our God, great is our Lord, holy is his name. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Lecha Adonai Hagadula Vehagevura Vehatif Eret. Veha Neitzach, Veha Hod, 
כי חול בשמיים ובארץ לך אדוני, הממלכה והמתנשא לכו לראש. רוממו, רוממו, השם אלוהינו, והשתחוו, והשתחוו, להדום רגליו קדוש הוא. רוממו, רוממו, השם אלוהינו, והשתחוו, והשתחוו, להר קודשו. כי קדוש, כי קדוש, כי קדוש, השם אלוהינו. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Hallelujah.
first day of Rosh Hashanah comes from Genesis, Reshit, chapter 21. It talks about the birth of Yitzchak, Isaac. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher bachar banu mikol hamim, v'natan lanu et horato, baruch ata Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed, blessed is, is the Lord, Lord the blessed, blessed One, forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Okay, so you hold this one up. And we're going to read from right here. Vadonai pakaret sara ka'asher amar Vaya Saronai Le Sara Kaashe Diber Vatar Vatelet Sara Le Avraham Ben Liz Kunav Lamoed Asher di berotovo Elohim. Vayikra Avraham et shem beno hanolad lo. Asher yalda lo sara yitzchak. Then Hashem took note of Sarah as he had said, and Hashem did for Sarah as he had promised. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Avraham in his old age, at the appointed time of which God had spoken to him. And Avraham called the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Yitzchak. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah temet Bechayi olam natabi Yeshua Meshichenu Baruch ata Adonai Noten ha Torah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and eternal life in Yeshua, our Messiah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Please stand for Hagbah. 
And since we're talking about the birth of Isaac, I'd like to invite Isaac Shishman to come up, and he's going to raise the Torah for us for Hagba. Because Jerry can't do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to lean it down. Okay. There you go. Oops. Got to have a big left hand on Rosh Hashanah. Bezot HaTorah, Asher Samoshe, Lifne Bene Yisrael, Alpi Adonai, Beyad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Here. You may be seated. Great. Yasher <laughs> Koach. Yeah. The Haftarah reading this morning comes from First Shmuel, Samuel. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Bachar bin Vim Tovim Viratza Vidivrehem Hane Marim Beemet Baruchata Adonai Abocher Batora Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Yisrael Amo Uvin viei ha'emet v'atzedek. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moses, your people Israel, and prophets of truth and righteousness. Vayehi ish echad min haramatayim Tzofim me ha'efrayim Ushmo el kana Ben Yerocham ben Elihu Ben tochu ven suf efrati Velohu shete nashim Shem achat chana Veshem hashenit penina Vayehi lifnina yeladim Ulchana en yeladim Veala ha ishahu me iro me yamim yamima le hishtahabot velis boach ladonai tvaot beshilo vesham shnevene eli. Chofni ufin chas kohanim ladonai. 
in its translation. Now there was a certain man from Ramatayim Sophim from the hill country of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Yerucham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of, son of Tzuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Chana, the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had, no, had children, but Chana had no children. Now this man would go up from his city yearly to worship and the sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Chofni, and Pinchas were priests to Hashem there. Baruch Aronai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Tzur ko haolamim, Tzadik becho hadorot, Ha'el haneeman, Ha'omer ve'ose, Ha'medaber u'mekayim, Ha'el-Haneeman Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God, who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God who is faithful in all his words. Please stand as we return the Sefer Torah to the Aaron Kodesh, and we will recite Eitz Chaim together. Eitz Chaim He La machazikim ba vetomche ha meushar derache ha darche noam vechoneti bote ha It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back to you, O Lord, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. seated. Yeah, it's like I just learned a blessing, right? <laughs> oh well, it happens. <laughs> uh, last night, of course, uh, I taught relative to uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, the fact of Jewish New Year as it's understood. Uh, but this morning, we'll be focusing rather on uh, the more biblical phrasing that's used for this holy day, uh, Yom Teruah, uh, a day of blowing of trumpets, and considering that. Uh, in any case, uh, Father, I do pray for your blessing upon our study of the word, that your name be glorified and exalted. 
B'Shem Yeshua, Amen. Uh, please stand, if you will, as we read some scripture. Two slides, so don't backslide too soon. Uh, and please notice what I have underlined. Take note of that. That'll be essential for our studies as well. Let's read all of it in unison. Here we go. Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a complete rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. The day of atonement is to be a Sabbath of complete rest to you. You shall humble your souls this month at evening. From evening unto evening you shall keep your Sabbath. Now the fifteenth day of the seventh month, gather in the produce of the land. You shall keep the festival of Hashem, lasting seven days. A complete rest on the first day. A complete rest on the eighth day. And on the first day of the booths, you shall take for yourself the foliage of beautiful trees, palm branches of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. You shall rejoice before Hashem for seven days. Avinu, we thank you uh, for the truth of the seventh month, uh, that we are, stand ready now for the finale rally that you have for us. Help us to learn what readiness means as we rest in our Messiah. May his name be glorified and exalted. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, not only as the world can comprehend, but far beyond that, uh, the very peace with God that comes in the Prince of Peace. Bring revival to the Jewish people and to all nations. This we pray in Messiah's name. Amen. Please be seated, if you will. Uh, as we uh, uh, come into the study today, uh, we want to note something I, I said in passing. Rosh Hashanah is a traditional name uh, for the festival, uh, even though it's the first day of the seventh month. The first day of the seventh month. You say, why do you keep saying seven all the time? Well, the word uh, for uh, Shavua, for seven, comes from the same root for making an oath, making a vow, as it were, an oath. God's promise of redemption finds its utter fulfillment relative to the seventh month. And the fact that it's the seventh month and not the first month is important for us to understand. You must remember that the first month had to do with Passover, Pesach, which dealt with the salvation that God provides through the Messiah. All that was done in bringing us out of Egypt foreshadowed the greater deliverance that we have in the Messiah uh, as the blood of the Lamb at Passover time was applied to the doorway of the homes. They might not come under judgment and have deliverance. So the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, applied to our hearts, the doorway of our souls, uh, we have deliverance accordingly. And we must understand that as foundational. All the other months are built upon that truth, what we receive in the Messiah. And so the very issues of these months all remind us of what we lost in Gan Eden and Garden of Eden because of sin. We had rest with God. And you notice how often we read uh, in the portions or underlined complete rest. That'll be a theme for our study this morning, complete rest rest. What we have now will be more fully uh, uh, appreciated and experienced uh, in the years to come, we trust. Oh, come quickly, Lord Yeshua, before I finish this message. I'm ready. I'm ready. But in any case, and by the way, every time uh, we blow the shofar, and I thank you, Stephen, uh, for uh, your wonderful service in that regard, but every time, you know, it's Takiya Gedolah, I'm, I, I can't, the, the, I'm, I'm expecting that's it. You know, let, I'm very disappointed to still be here after we do that. But I'll get over it and I'm ready. Okay. Uh, the seventh month on the biblical lunar calendar accordingly. Now, regarding this matter, we want to understand that the whole new covenant, the New Testament for visitors, those live streaming, uh, those who attend church, 
Uh, you may call it the New Testament. It's actually in biblically the Brit Chavishah, the New Covenant. And it has to do with a covenant relationship that God has with his people. And so we want to understand that the New Covenant uh, is built upon the festivals of Israel. Now, I'm sure there'll be someone in the foyer who'll talk to me and say I must be completely wrong because they've been a Christian for 40 years, have attended church three times a week, uh, even when the church wasn't open, they attended. I understand. I appreciate your faithfulness. And then they'll say to me, I never heard any of this before. But don't blame me. You know, I'm only doing what I can do. Go talk to your pastor about why he shortchanged you on these very biblical matters that are essential to understand the whole New Covenant, New Testament as such, uh, regarding the festivals of Israel. And so, regarding these matters, and we'll be going into this with some depth, what I'm looking at right now on the screen, regarding the, the New Covenant, that the Shabbat, the New Moon, and the annual festivals are intended by God to point to the Messiah. Now, this coming... Uh, Shabbat, I'll be going in depth uh, regarding uh, Colossians 2.16, uh, but in any, in 17 the following week. And, but in any case, we want to understand that what it says there, they are a shadow of things to come, not were. If your translation has strange things, or, the, or some of your translations in English say things like are merely uh, shadows of things to come. Merely, they put things in because it's merely to them, just not merely to God. And so these are matters that still point ahead to Yeshua. They still testify of the truth that God has for us in the festivals, pointing to Messiah as witnesses. And so all of it is relevant and revelatory as a, as for all of us, all believers in Messiah, Jew and Gentile alike. It's for all believers in Messiah and divine witnesses accordingly. And so the annual festivals, as I noted for you, salvation at Passover, at Shavuot or Pentecost, sanctification with the giving of the Holy Spirit, which set us apart, and then the fall festivals regarding glorification accordingly. And so we consider this matter uh, that proving in Yeshua God's faithfulness to Israel and the nations. And so these three final feasts all occur in the seventh month. Uh, that in itself is significant, seven being the time of completion, and therefore uh, understanding that God is completing the redemptive work. And so that being said, there's something else that ties those three together. I have it up on the screen, Shabbaton. Let's say that word together. You ready? One, two, three. Shabbaton. Shabbaton, yes. Uh, it's translated complete rest, uh, you know, like a really, 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 really Shabbat, uh, in-depth, intense Shabbat kind of idea here, complete rest. And so we find it used, as we had read in this uh, chapter, verse 24, 32, and 39, regarding the, the fact that the Shabbaton comes in the fall festivals, those last three festivals, including Yom Turah, what we're celebrating today. And so uh, all of that has to do with regaining the rest we lost because of sin in Genesis. And so as Passover, this is vitally important, Passover pictures our salvation rest, our salvation rest. And all the rest grow out of that. In other words, if you're not familiar with Passover, you miss the point of the rest of them. Because unfortunately, you can celebrate the, the fall festivals out of biblical context and therefore not understand the foundation of Passover. And what we have at Passover therefore leads us to these fall festivals. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, the rest we have. Yeshua said to us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, uh, come to me all who labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you, and the word that the rabbis used in the Greek translation of the Tanakh is the same word that's used there in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 in the Greek. In other words, he is our complete rest. 
He is our Shabbaton. Now we all, he's the Lord of the Sabbath, and so certainly that is true on a weekly basis. But in the bigger picture, he's our complete rest. One stop shopping in Yeshua. Salvation, sanctification, glorification, all in the finished work of Messiah. And as you look to him and trust in him and abide in him, you grow in him and experience and minister the rest. You not only are to experience it, to minister rest to others so that you're ministering life and grace and kindness and forgiveness and mercy, all that comes in the rest that we have in Yeshua. And so this is vitally important, even as Herzl would say right now, if you had a chance. And so the definition, uh, as I mentioned on several times now, uh, time, a time of keeping a complete rest. A time of keeping a complete rest. Uh, very, when you read through the Bible, uh, if you're unaware of these things, this will come a little bit, maybe it's a shock or surprising to you, that the Bible handles these words very carefully. They're placed in specific places, in a specific order, to make a specific point that God wants to make. Now, let me show you what I mean. There's three times that Shabbaton is used in the Bible. For the weekly sab Sabbath, the seventh day, you'll see the theme right away. The seventh day Shabbat is the Shabbaton. You say every week, every week. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. Then the festivals in the seventh month, Shabbaton. Then in the seventh year, for the land Sabbath, it's called the Shabbaton. Do you get the idea how seven is connected with our complete rest as God completes, fulfills the very promises of redemption? And so that's the only places where Shabbaton is used. So we can understand that it's in his completion of his word, his redemption, his oath to us for salvation. In that we have our rest. And so we want to grow in the truth of this matter. And so as I have up on the screen there, Shevin Shavua, from the same root, therefore, the Shabbaton of the seventh month, the completion of God's program of redemption of rest for the whole world. Uh, a redemption of rest. You say, well, I've heard about this. Uh, I was, you know, uh, I came from a church. I was baptized as a child. Uh, and I've heard about this, but I've never experienced the rest. Well, you may have gone through ceremonies, but God never tells us those ceremonies will produce rest. It's only by personal faith in Yeshua. It's only by personal faith in Yeshua. Whether they're Jewish ceremonies, Christian ceremonies, Muslim ceremonies, Hindu cer I don't even know if the Hindus have ceremonies, but whatever ceremonies. They can't help you. It's personal faith in the Messiah. And then those ceremonies are reflective of that truth. The, when you get baptized or immersed, it reflects on the once and for all salvation you receive. And so you have to receive the salvation first. For it's the redemption rest that we have in Messiah. And all of this uh, pictures Messiah's kingdom and what's to come, Olam Haba, uh, the age of the world to come. Uh, when the curse is removed and rest is enjoyed completely. Right now, right now, we have to submit to God in order to resist the devil. You got that? So we're submitting to God to resist. We're fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat and spiritual warfare. It's not going to be that way in the future. That's for now. So we have that rest in Messiah with the assurance of what he has done for us and therefore the victory we have in him. But one day there won't be a spiritual battle to fight. We won't be struggling uh, uh, with the flesh and blood issues that we deal with every single day as this rest is enjoyed. And so the scriptural purpose of the seventh month Shabbatot is to prepare his people for the triumphant return of Messiah and his glorious kingdom. In other words, it was intended by God to have these fall festivals uh, 
in order to have the people of God uh, prepared and ready for his re Are you living ready now? Are you living ready now? If he was to come back right now, you say, well, hold it a second. I got a lot of things on my schedule for this coming week. I don't know if I want to come back right now. Well, like it or not, it's not up to you. Come quickly, Lord Yeshua. And so this uh, is the redemption hope for Israel and the nations, uh, which will become Yom Shekelo, Shabbat, uh, the day when all will be Shabbat. This is uh, eternity in the eternal kingdom, uh, in the eternal age to come. Uh, may his name be blessed accordingly. And so with that in mind, we may end up with a couple of questions. How will this come about? And are you ready? Now, one answer that most people, sane people might say, how would I know if I'm ready? How would I know if I'm prepared? How in the world would I ever know that, you know? I live a day in, day out kind of life. I go to work, I come home, uh, uh, get some rest, eat a little bit, but whatever it is. How would I know? Well, the Bible helps us uh, to know the truth. And those who rest in Messiah, listen carefully, this is the theme of what I'm about to talk about. Those who rest in Messiah are ready for his return and are restored to his rule. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, readiness with the trumpets, uh, restored through the atonement, under his rule through Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles. And so the outline you have in your bulletin, which might be helpful to you, follow along. Uh, Shabbaton by the reminder of blowing of trumpets, of repenting of souls, that's uh, reflective upon Yom Kippur. Uh, and then finally, a rejoicing with branches. And so when you come here, I guess it's a, a week from, uh, two weeks from this coming Shabbat, uh, we'll be celebrating how branches all over the place, be waving them and going a little crazy on the matter. And so dealing with uh, the Shabbaton, blowing of trumpets, a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets. We need reminders that we have rest. We just don't need reminders to rest. You often hear that, well, I need a day of rest. I'm really tuckered out. That's really not what it's about. That's really not what it's, what it's about is reminding us that we have rest. The weekly Shabbat reminds us every week of the rest we have in the Lord of the Shabbat. Our celebration of Shabbat has to do with the Lord of the Shabbat because all the festivals are secondary matters. The primary matter is the Lord of the Shabbat, glorifying him, proclaiming him, and understanding him. This actually brings value to any day of the week or year. And so the Feast of Trumpets, it's a blowing of trumpets as a reminder. And many people get confused about what it's reminding us of. So you say, is it to remember uh, for you know, Jewish New Year? Is that it? You say, well, what makes you say something like that? Well, I have a lot of Jewish friends, and a lot of them are very thankful that they have evangelical Christian friends who tell them when the high holy days are coming up, because they would, wouldn't be mindful of it unless a Christian friend told them, because many Christian people are more aware of some of these things than most of the secular Jewish community is aware of all these matters. And so, no, it doesn't have to do with that. The New Year is the traditional name. Uh, we adopted the name and the name of the month, Tishrei, meaning beginnings in Babylonian, in Chaldee. And so this is something we brought with us. You say, well, that's unusual. No, no, no. We have four New Years. Four new we love New Years. We would have six if we could figure out how to stick two more in there. Now, every month should be a New Year. We have a great time. We love, collect them all. They're great. Uh, but no, no, it's because... Uh, the feast of uh, the blowing of the trumpets is a Torah mystery. You know, when you read through the Tanakh, you don't see a whole lot of information about uh, the feast of the blowing of the trumpets. You don't see a whole lot about Yom Turah. Uh, it's kind of a mystery. And when you have a mystery, what happens, people don't like mysteries. They, they don't like to wait on the Lord. Uh, they don't want to wait till God fills in the blanks. 
And so we came up with a whole lot of traditions to fill in the gaps. Because, well, we're creative people, that's what we are. And so all the traditions fill in the gaps, uh, but actually it's a reminder of redemption uh, regarding the shofar. This was recognized in some of our traditions, uh, in some of the writings, and the Midrash Rabbah, written about five or 600 uh, A.C.E. Um, it says there, at the bottom of your screen, Israel will ultimately be redeemed by the ram's horn, as it says, and the Lord God will blow the horn. So there was an identification with the blowing of the shofar along with redemption. There was an identification of that amongst my people. And so regarding that matter, the new covenant fills in the blanks quite nicely on the mystery. It's a mystery no more, so to speak, uh, you notice what it says in that portion there? Let's read that together. Uh, here we go. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last shofar. For the shofar will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable, and we'll all be changed. That's why I get disappointed every time you hit Gedolah, and we're still here because I'm looking forward to the upper taker, not to the undertaker. And so when we consider that matter, you know, we're going to, uh, we'll trade in the perishable for the imperishable, the mortal for the immortal, the corruptible for the incorruptible. Uh, what a wonderful promise we have here. But this is actually what we're preparing for, what to be reminded of, of the rest we have in Messiah, so we'll live ready for him now. It's not getting ready that gives you rest, it's trusting in Messiah, the rest we have, then you are ready. It's the rest we have in Messiah that readies us. Do you get that? It's not doing something, some kind of, you know, wake yourself up or beat yourself up or anything like that. That does not what, God, that's not the Bible teaches. Messiah provided the rest that readies us for his return. That's why when we read in the book of Acts, by the way, in Acts chapter 2, we find Peter there proclaiming to all the people who had come uh, for Shavuot, for Pentecost, uh, proclaiming them about this being the last days. Now, Peter, boy, are you wrong. That was 2,000 years ago, Pete. You really fumbled the ball in that one. No, 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 no. From the time of the death and the resurrection and the ascension of our Messiah, there's nothing else that God has to do before Messiah comes to us. That's the point he was making. Right now, we will live ready because we have that rest in Yeshua, the Messiah, for those who have trusted in him. You receive that rest through his atonement. And so we want to understand that because of Messiah's atonement, by faith we are therefore made ready uh, for his glorious presence. And so when we say we're living ready, let me, let me clarify some things. When we say we're living ready, listen carefully, we're living ready because we abide in him. We are living ready because we rest in him, because we trust in him. We're living ready because we live in him. You say, what about the rotten old sins I have in my life and all the problems and all the chaos in my mind and all that? I guarantee you that prayer won't help you. Fasting won't help you. Religious ceremonies will not help you. The rest is in Messiah. It's trusting in him. It's trusting in him that brings rest to your soul, brings peace to your heart. Beware of getting too religious on the matter. It's not about you, what you have to do. It's what has been done for you in the Messiah. Uh, this is the truth, uh, etc. So we'll live ready for him by resting in him. Uh, let's read from 1 John 2, 28 together. Here we go. And now abide in him, so when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed at his coming. How, do we, how are we going to be confident and unashamed? Abide. Did you get that? How are we going to be confident and unashamed? By abiding in him, by trusting in him, by depending on him, by following him, by looking to him, by... What he has done for us in his finished work, we look to that as the object of our faith. 
and therefore have the rest, the confidence, unashamed, because we're abiding in him. That's exactly how the new covenant teaches us in all these matters, living, uh, to be living in the readiness for Messiah's return. And so the shofar, uh, all the shofars that get blown are all reminding us of what we have in him. And so it's a reminder by the blowing of those shofarot, the shofars, the trumpets. It's not a reminder without the blowing of the shofar. You say, well, what do you mean? It's to remind us. See, the Bible understands how much reminding we need. Someone said, what do you do? I mean, you spend 45 minutes a week yelling at people every Shabbat morning. What are you trying to do? Remind them. I'm trying to be a reminder to them. You say, why does it take 45 minutes? Well, the first 44, they're still sleeping. It's that last minute I have hope to wake them up and get them going. Well, that's what the shofar does as well. It's reveille, not taps. It's not supposed to put us to sleep. You understand the difference when a horn goes off? I, you know, for those of you who are driving behind me, uh, and you, I heard you, you know, telling me how much you love me with, with the horn that you applaud. That was just lovely. Thank you very much for that reminder of your love for me uh, and my safe driving patterns. But in any case, this wakes you up. You know, this gets you going. That's the point. To reorient us from my will to his will. To look to him, to trust in him, to depend on him. His will be done then. As I look to him, abide in him, depend on him, follow him. It's all about him. From my will to his will to be done. As my mind is set on things above. The heavenly things where Yeshua is seated. And so it's a reminder also of our faithful service that keeps us in his rest, ready for his return. Living for him, resting in him. You say, well, what do you mean? If you're resting in him, you're living for him. You see, your service is living for him. When you take care of your children, or maybe uh, you have uh, parents or grandparents in your home you're taking care of, Rest in him to care for them. Otherwise, you may become bitter from the experience and not better. God meant it to make you better, to help you grow as you rest in Messiah, bear much fruit. But if you're not resting in him, not looking to him, not trusting him, going through those situations, raising those beautiful children, etc., all of that can make you bitter, not better, if you don't go through the situation trusting in Yeshua, abiding in him, and his rest that he brings in the midst of it all. Amitin as we used to say back in the old country. Because, as I said there, you're not resting, you're not ready. If you're not resting, you're not ready. If you're upset, if you're distracted, if you're all anxious about things, you say, well, what do you mean anxious? Perhaps you've been telling lies to either protect yourself or promote yourself. And you're concerned that someone might find out. Well, you're not enjoying his rest. You say, well, what do I do about it? Repent, Teshuvah. Lord, I've blown it. I haven't been trusting the Messiah. I haven't been looking to him. I've been trusting in a lie to protect me or promote me. That's wrong, O Lord. Uh, may the blood of Yeshua cleanse me, that I might rest in him, clear conscience, a heart set unto God. This is what it means to be ready for him. We got that now? So we want to understand where you're not resting, you're not restored. You got to get that going there, those areas of your life where there's nothing but anxiety, all those kind of places, all those people who upset you when their names are mentioned, you better get to forgiving them, forgiving them for their offenses against you. How do I do that? By the blood of Yeshua, his atonement is what not only for forgiveness for my sins against God, but for all sins, period, all matter of sin shall be forgiven. Sins against you, sins against me, the same atonement reconciles us together and makes us one. As opposed to people having to jump through hoops or say sorry in 12 different languages or whatever demands you place on them. Uh, no, no, it's the atonement Messiah. Restores relationship, resting together in him. And so regarding the second point here, uh, Shabbaton by repenting of souls, it says in the portion we already read, 
uh, regarding Yom Kippur, you shall humble yourselves and present a blood offering by fire to Hashem, a Sabbath of complete rest. A Sabbath of complete rest. And so we find in the atonement the rest once more. And so it's not a rest without blood offering repentance. It's what Yeshua has done for us. You say, well, I already did that. Well, understand, if you will, the three fall festivals. Understand the three fall festivals. Uh, you may want to write this down. It, it could come in handy. Some chit chat at the next dinner party you go to. This will be kind of interesting, a little tidbit to throw around. And so the three fall festivals, Yom Turah, the Feast of Trumpets, is the gathering of the body of Messiah. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, prophesies ahead to the gathering of Israel. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, looks ahead to the gathering of the nations. The gathering of the body of Yeshua, the gathering of the nation of Israel, the gathering of the nations of the world, as we all rejoice around him, as I'll note, I think, in a moment. But in any case, there's no rest for Israel. As much as we pray, we pray all the time for the peace of Jerusalem. But there's no rest for Israel without the atonement and teshuvah. You know, when it says that you shall humble your souls, and out of that we came to be doing fasting. So, you know, don't expect a big oneg at our services on Yom Kippur, just saying. You say, well, why would I come? Well, I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that for you. But understand when it says humbling your souls and presenting, understand what this means. It has to do not with fasting, not with thinking less of yourself, it has to do with not looking to yourself at all, but looking to the blood atonement. Humility has nothing to do with you. It has to do with you recognizing there's no good thing in my flesh. There is no merit that I can do to attain any kind of atonement. Therefore, I must look to the sacrifice that has been made. That's when you humble your souls. That's when you're humbling yourself. That will be Israel's future as well, as the nation humbles itself before God, recognizing what God has done, as they make the confession of Isaiah 53, etc. And so, as we consider repentance, not merely fasting, uh, having our, not of our works, looking to him and to him alone, national day of restoration of Israel. That's why when you study uh, in the scriptures regarding the scripture regarding Yom Kippur, it's all in the plural. It has to do with the nation of Israel. It wasn't a day for individual salvation. It was a day that had to do with the nation of Israel being restored, anticipating, foreshadowing the regathering of Israel, etc. And so prophesied the Messiah Yeshua uh, that he fulfilled the atonement and proclaimed to the good news to Israel and nations. So Yom Kippur is to be, was observed. You know, in the first century, during the time of the Shalachim, the apostles, every believer in every country was observing Yom Kippur. Acts 27, verse 9. Uh, every believer in every country, if you're a believer, you're observing that. Why would you do that? As you identify with Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you understand what the issues are, as we teach here in our community as well. And so it's, it has to do with the promises, and we see the prophecy there of the fulfillment of Yom Kippur at the bottom of the screen there from Zechariah 12, 10, and 13. One. Let's read that together so you won't fall asleep on me. Here we go. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and mourn for him. In that day, a fountain will be opened for sin and impurity. Right now, it's available to all who believe. In that day, it'll be for Israel when they look unto him, uh, the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua. And so we come finally to the third point, Shabbat, by rejoicing with branches. And uh, we want to under, well, we'll be studying this as well, as you can understand when we get there. Uh, it's not just rejoicing, but with branches. 
That seems a little weird. That's a little bit wild with branches. My goodness. What is this, like an agricultural community? No, it's what the Bible teaches for good reasons, as we understand it. Uh, why the branch? A feast of Sukkot, booths or trap tabernacles, a harvest festival, also called the feast of ingathering. This is when the nations will be gathered unto the Lord in the millennial kingdom. And so branches from the harvest used for booths. Uh, also the branches are being waved as we thank God and represent Adonai's rest. How do we have that rest? we recognizing it uh, by what God has provided. The branches recognize the harvesting of the food. God has provisioned for us. And also in his protection, we build these little boothy things. His protection. And so our rest comes because of the great provision and protection that we have in our Messiah. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, Yeshua is our booth. In him is our full provision. We, in him we are complete and our full protection. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Messiah Yeshua. He's our provision. He's our protection. In him is our rest. And this is why we rejoice so heartily on the matter with all our heart and soul. And so this is actually what the, what the prophets have written about uh, regarding the nations as well. Uh, please read with me Zechariah 14, 16. Here we go. All the nations will go up from year to year to worship the King Hashem of hosts and to celebrate the Feast of... Can you imagine that? Do you really think any of those nations are ready? Get them ready. Make sure you pass it along to others. Get ready. Let me tell you what to do with the branches here. Let's build a little boothy thing because we're ready, you know. We're living ready. And that's why we do those things because we are ready, anticipating uh, the finale rally of God here, all rejoicing in Jerusalem, all of us worshiping the Lord God, etc. all King Mashiach being honored and exalted accordingly. So it's not just with branches but with rejoicing. Can you imagine God commands us to rejoice? Some of you sour pusses have to get over yourself. God commands us to rejoice. So you better get with it. Uh, you say, well, what's to rejoice in? What God has done for you because he loves you. Because he loves you and forgives you and is merciful to you. And therefore we rejoice with gladness in light of who God is and what he's done. And so the Shabbaton on the first and eighth days, the eighth day of solemn assembly, first seven days, you just got to rest and rejoice. You rest in the Lord and rejoice. You rest in rejoicing. You say, what does that mean? You can't really rejoice unless you're resting. If you're all anxious about things, you're not rejoicing. I don't care if you slap a smile on your face simply because you come to a you know, building like this and praise God along with everyone else. No, no, God knows your heart. If you're anxious about these things, you're not going to be rejoicing. It's those who are resting in the Lord that rejoice in the Lord. That's what this festival is about. Recognize him, orienting our lives around him. That he is now King Mashiach, king over our life. Feel like it or not, as redeemed souls obey God, rest and rejoice in him. Rest and rejoice in him. In Messiah, looking to him, trusting in him, depending on him. And so we anticipate Israel's restored kingdom. We're going to rejoice accordingly in the glorious joy in his presence when Messiah reigns uh, over all. When he reigns over all. This is how the book of Revelation actually anticipates uh, the actual matter of these things. Uh, let's read for us. Selves. Let's read Revelation 17, 14, the bottom. Let's go. The Lamb will overcome because he's Lord of lords, King of kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen and faithful. He is the Lamb, the Passover Lamb. The blood atonement is reminded to us all the way through the Bible to understand where our joy comes from out of our rest. And so Yeshua will reign as king of all the nations, sitting on a glorious throne in Jerusalem during the millennium, and will rest in his peace and in his blessing, all of us together. And so it says here, let's read from Matthew 25, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory, then he will sit on his glorious throne, and all the nations gathered before him. A gathering of the nations. So we want to understand uh, how the millennial kingdom, all the nations will be gathered. 
Israel redeemed, the body of Messiah glorified, exalting him. And so with the union of Israel and the nations in King Yeshua, the world will be unified in the joyous Shabbaton of perfect rest, through the glorious worship of the one and only God, the one true God. Hashem will be king of all the whole earth. On that day, Hashem will be one and his name one. You say, well, why is he not one now? Well, he is. But our separation from each other shows how imperfect that rest is and how we look forward to that time when all of us will be united in him and therefore his name will be one amongst us in our lives and through our lives. And so as we conclude in prayer, the final three feasts prepare us for Yeshua, Yeshua's glorious return. Are you ready? Are you living ready? Are you resting in him, trusting in him, living ready for him? Are you restored to him? Oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. If you are restored, your calling is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, uh, that he might return uh, upon their repentance. And then finally, are you ruled by the Lord? What do you mean? Yeah, in other words, the fact that he's going to sit on a throne means he's in charge. Let me ask you a question. What do you allow him to be in charge of? Is he in charge of your time? Is he in charge of your treasure? Is he in charge of your talents and abilities? Is he? You see, where he's not, you're not resting. Those are the areas that are unprepared. Those are the areas you want to bring to the Lord. That we might be looking to him and looking to him alone. So we trust in Messiah. Ready or not, you've got to be restored. Then he will rule. This is the truth of the word of God. Let's pray together. As we bow our hearts before God, as is our custom, we encourage every single person to open their heart to the Lord to open their heart to God's great gift, a gift of rest through the atonement of Messiah, a gift of forgiveness and mercy and kindness and love. If you have not yet received it even now, oh, come to him, trust in him. Our prayer team be up in the front to pray with you if your heart is burdened, if you're unsure, if you're unsure that you've trusted in him, they'll be glad to pray with you. And trust the Lord along with you. And so even now, open your heart to him. Avinu, we pray that your blessing would abide to the glorification of that name which is above every name. That the name of Yeshua be lifted up, magnified, and exalted in our hearts, even as one day will be throughout the world and all of eternity. For in his name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. The Amen. We close our service. Please stand and join me. This comes from Zechariah, chapter 14, 9. Mar vehaya Adonai Lemelech al kol haaretz Vayom ha-hu, vayom ha-hu Yie Adonai Echad Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo Echad And it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the earth. On that day the Lord will be one, and his name one. Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Arucha ta Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem in haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Into a sweet year. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the tree. Amen. 
Would you please close your eyes and bow your heads? Just allow the Lord to place his name on you this day and bless you. Yivrechecha Adonai ve'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai parvelecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai parvelecha v'yasem lecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Shana tovah to you.